So in the last video, I talked about a process called peel grinding on the manual surface grinder. And a lot of people had asked me to do a follow-up and go in a little more depth on that. So that's what this video is for. So peel grinding is a technique where we make small step overs as the parts reciprocating and we just step the wheel across the part and you can either go full depth or you can leave a tiny bit of spark out allowance but most of the time I'm just taking it right to size and we step over like this. Now the distance of that step over is tied to the grain diameter. Uh, I never exceed one half of a grain diameter and in reality I'm usually closer to a quarter or three-eighths of a grain diameter for my step over. The amount of stock depth you can take off is also about the same, uh, half of a grain diameter or less. Um, now, this is wildly different to how stock's typically removed on a grinder where you plunge down a little and traverse and plunge more and traverse. Uh, and if you look at it from a factor of grinding parameters, it's not as efficient. But if we look at this from a factor of the greater operation, it starts to make sense in very certain scenarios. Um, so one of which is on an all-manual grinder. Because we don't really have to move the head up and down all day for various parts, if we're doing a batch of parts, we can just go right to our size and leave the wheel head where it is and just feed the part or feed the wheel back and forth, never having to move the elevation. Uh, and that's that's really a stable way of doing work, and it uh, it, it can make life a little easier. Um, and then the other thing is, the the roughing is kind of concentrated to the first twenty five percent of the wheel, and then the back half acts almost as a wiper. And um, so you you tend to still get quite a good finish. Um, even without the spark out because you just have such a light step over and so much of the wheel just taking a spark out essentially. Um, and because one or two grains are doing the bulk of the removal, the cutting forces tend to be quite light. You could see later on in the video I'm just doing all the roughing with uh, one screw holding the part down and it works pretty well. Um, where this is used in industry is on very slender uh, cylindrical parts. Um, you can almost follow a profile like a, a lathe would and because the cutting forces are so light you don't have nearly the deflection problems. So um, back to step over amount. Like I said it's going to be a factor of the grain diameter and when we think about it, it we, looks like it's just pushing all the grinding onto the side but in reality grinding wheels have small radii on the corners. And they're about, best case scenario, one grain radius. And so your grinding wheel really looks like that. Um, and now when we look at it, and we have that step over amount, it's starting to be reminiscent of a high feed milling approach, or uh, prime turning, where the radius forms a thinner chip. And uh, that's kind of what helps us out when why this is something we can uh, make work even on a, a, an older manual machine. If you really want to optimize things, you can take the bottom of your wheel and dress like a five degree chamfer on it. And now you're really getting that chip thinning approach. But um, so the reasons I use this uh, is when I have low cutting forces and I also use it when I'm a little concerned about heat. So uh, really small parts that fit on your finger can be challenging to keep cool. Uh, and this, because it's taking a relatively heavy cut and actually producing chips, uh, it seems as though the heat goes out in the chip and the part does tend to stay a little cooler. So uh, we'll get into it and you guys can see this in action. So before we get to grinding, I wanted to take a look at the wheel. This is a chunk of a Norton 5SG 60 grit eye bond, and the wheel abrasive grits are not all that consistent to what I drew. You can see some long shards, some irregular shapes, uh, and so to say that they're a consistent diameter and they'll produce this size corner radius is uh, a little off the mark. 
So to really truly know what the corner radius of the wheel is, we take a razor blade like this, and you can see all the various profiles I've done in it, and we'll plunge into the razor blade, and uh, once we're all the way to depth, we'll deburr both sides, and then go back through a few times more with the wheel to get any residue. And that should give us a really consistent representation of not only the form of the wheel, but the width. And then we can check it out on the microscope. So we'll probe a few spots on that radius, and the digital readout will tell us the diameter of the circle that makes that uh, fillet. And it is 15 thou, 6 tenths. And I usually kind of anticipate about a 16 thou uh, grain diameter for a 60 grit. So here is our first pass uh, using this process, and I'm taking a four thou step over and a seven thou depth of cut and uh, so four thou would be a quarter grain diameter step over and uh, the next part I bump it up to six thou and it went just as well uh, but as I described it it just uh, takes a light pass and steps over and all the wheel wear is concentrated onto the left corner of the wheel leaving the better part of the right half of the wheel as a, a, a wiper of sorts. So once the roughing's done, the, the wheel will go into a, a finishing mode and it'll take two very light passes and then do some sparking out. Um, but you don't always need to do that depending on what you're doing. I mean the, the extra passes. Sometimes you could just feed across and be done. Um, but uh, the, the fixture I'm holding it in is what we call a second dimension fixture. We use it for squaring very small parts. And uh, it's just a toolmaker's cube with a rib and then a uh, small cone chip screw pushing it against the rib. Uh, insanely versatile and I, I highly recommend if you're into grinding making yourself one. So this is the swarf from the process and it is like lathe swarf, just miniature. Uh, we have the nice curly pieces, we have some uh, some bird's nest even, and these are fairly nice sized pieces of grinding swarf and I suspect that might be why it stays so cool as uh, the heat is coming off in the chip. So here's the six thou step over. Uh, I don't typically use this process in the CNC. This is more something I do in the manual grinder, but the CNC grinder made it very easy to show this off. I could get really consistent step overs and it's a lot easier to film. But uh, uh, it is sometimes useful, like I said earlier, if you have a, a flimsy setup and you want to keep your, your tool pressure down, uh, or if you have very small parts and you have some heat issues, it's uh it's very very useful then but for for most like flat plates and squaring i'll use a traditional grinding approach with flood coolant so while the cnc grinder is running i'm typically doing subsequent operations to the part over on the manual grinder and it makes for a nice little one piece flow so while while that's squaring the ends i'm doing the the lengths on the manual grinder so I'll just I know I have 10 thou stock so I'll just touch the end and I'll take five off of each side and so I'll move the wheel head down five and Y axis and then I'll just feed the wheel across five thou at a time I'm going five over here just because the the Z axis hand wheel is graduated five thou increments so it's very easy to eyeball it to a consistent step over. But uh, I just feed across and then I'll feed back over. And it takes about 30 seconds. Um, so you might ask, does this really need ground? And from a dimensional standpoint, no. I could have ground this or milled this prior to heat treat and it would have been fine. Um, but the customer is laser engraving the ends of these. And I think it'll just look uh, an awful lot better laser engraved. And then the other factor you have to consider is I didn't have to do any finish milling when I rough these. I just used a rough corn cob end mill and sent them to heat treat. And so the Haas I almost never really set up finish end mills. It's, uh, it's just roughing and drilling in that machine. 
and the grinders do the important work and that's for me a very nice workflow so uh, if you do manual grinding give the peel technique a try I really like it and it saves me a lot of trouble